lot of people believe that the things I talk about had been uh, talked about in the past. Uh, when I was a member of Technocracy, they said they had blueprints for the future. I never saw any. I asked to see them. The only blueprint they had was a rough on the continental hydrology, irrigation, but no real detail on it, how the, how the lift locks work on the canal or anything. And uh, I asked Scott how he felt about circular cities. He said, no, he believes in linear cities. And he did not question why circular cities. He just told me that we're going to use linear cities. Uh, cities in a line. So if you start here and you go through the whole city, you have to go back to where you started from. And the circular arrangement, if you go around and you come back to where you started, you don't need to go back. And your car is there. In a circular plan or distribution center, there are areas marked refrigeration, air conditioning, whatever it is, and you park your car adjacent to that. Instead of just parking in a big parking lot, you have to then walk over the shoe department or the eyeglass department. This way it's marked on the outside of the circle what's in there. So you park adjacent to that area. If more people use the food shopping area, there's a larger parking set for that. But the only way to find out is how many people a day go to the food area? How many people, what percentage go to the eyeglass area? So the parking areas are based on that, not Fresco's decision. So what people have to understand is how statistics are gathered, how they're decided upon, and that's by the behavior of people. If most people go to the children's center, that has the largest parking area. If later on the schools become more efficient and work with less students at a time, the optimal amount of students depends on their age. The older people get, the more they understand if they're exposed. But children, you take a lot of children and you talk to them, like I'm talking to you, and you get feedback from the children. And the kind of feedback you get from the children determines how many children you can effectively change within a given time. If you find out that you should have no more than 15 kids at a time, depending on how sophisticated the subject is, you have to try it and find out how it works. And then when you write your conclusions, you say, in the system that I used, a certain number of children seem to learn faster. I haven't tried 17 different systems yet. There may be other conclusions. We welcome them. To me, to summarize this, it's saying, why don't you give your technology away today? I'm giving you everything I think they need okay. to make this jump. Okay. Now they ask, why don't you give your ideas away and make them available? After all, what you're trying to do is make the world a better place. So if you just give your ideas away. If I designed a round city and I gave it away, it'll be a commercial city. You couldn't move in unless you pay so much a week. See, like the, there's so many dentists in that city, so many barbers, not a whole bunch of barbers, the amount of barbers are needed to take care of that city. But they will rent it out at a high price because opening a restaurant in that city is a sure thing because there's 5,000 people. You understand? So it becomes commercial and damaged. Uh, they say, well, what about the good that it does? Well, let's take a helicopter. Could be used as an ambulance or machine gunning people. Most helicopters are used for military purposes, machine gunning people. The laser beam can be used to diminish the effects of optical disorders. I mean, op ophthalmy. Uh, lasers can be used in surgery 
They can also be connected to weapons. If the laser beam is on the person, the bullet come out. We have no evidence to support ideas that were put out there free. And there are people who say, well, Fresco really doesn't believe in having his name put out there. I do when it comes to a book that I wrote. If people ask me questions, I can answer it. But if another guy copies my book, and he, word for word, and he gets the credit for that, and people ask him, what do you do about this, what do you do about that, and they don't have that kind of background. They can't answer questions. But if you check with history, not fresco, you'll find that Louis Pasteur recommended vaccination. It never was a team of, of scientists. You'll find that the Wright brothers really developed the first powered flying machine. So you can go and write to the Wright brothers and say, well, how do you, how do you make your propeller? Or well, how much pitch does it have? Only they know because they made it. You have to go to Edison and say, how do you know how much of a vacuum to put in a glass lamp? And how do you decide the elements you use? You have to go to Edison. The gas company can't tell you that. When I was a kid, there was a people go so go around the streets lighting the gas lamps. They were all along the street. He was a lighter, a long pole, and he lit those lamps. Then when Edison system came out, he had to instruct people as to how it worked. When Tesla invented the coil, the Tesla coil, he had to instruct people. But if another guy lifted it, and he said, how many, what's the resistance of the wires in that? They didn't know, only Tesla. So it seems that in history, Einstein's theory of relativity, Pasteur, Darwin's theory of evolution, as against the religious concept. Is it perfect? No. But it's a hell of a lot greater. And Darwin spent many years trying to put this stuff together. I'm not against teaching people physics and science. That's fine. That's the elements for putting things together. The books that I read by other people did not have all the answers. Semantics never touched the social system. Jacques Loeb informed us a great deal about plantropism, geotropism, all these things that we knew little about, but Jacques Loeb was associated with. So you have, when you have the nuclear program to develop the atom bomb, there were always people in charge, like uh, Oppenheimer was in charge of nuclear research, Einstein's formula, helped in nuclear research. And there were many scientists, lead scientists, that directed that. When you go to Germany, you'll find Werner von Braun as head of rocketry. Why was he head? Because others didn't experiment. He experimented before it became necessary to build rockets. He was in, he belonged to the young German group in which they experimented with rockets. When Hitler got in, Hitler backed him, but von, von, Werner von Braun had to educate all the scientists that knew nothing about rockets. Where did he get the ideas from? Dirty, hard work with no financing. There was an American scientist named Goddard who spent his own money on rocket development, and he was able to get rockets to go up a mile high, and people thought he was a dreamer, you know. And he said, that if I talked about rockets in the scientific community, I was looked upon as a, a foolish person who is not practical. Do you understand? Are scientists the, the prime judge of things? No, they're not. You have to ask Goddard, how do you make your fuel combust? In other words, if you launch a rocket with, say, 20 pounds of, of, of propulsion, you're lifting that 20 pounds of propulsion up there. So the theory of rockets is to burn all the fuel you can and get the most propulsion, so you're not lifting up the fuel too. If you fill your car with gasoline to get to California, you're not going to get as many miles 
by filling it as you go. Otherwise, you're carrying the gasoline with you. Somebody that found that out, we should know who he is, so we can question him. But uh, what happens is, it appears that some members of of the Zeitgeist Movement and the Venus Project think that Fresco picked up all these ideas from books. No, he didn't. He worked his ass off compiling bits of information and taking out the inconsistencies. Now, if people come along and they say, uh, like some people do, they quote all the different things of the Venus Project and do not quote the source. So they get the, the applause and they get the approval, but they've done nothing to arrive at these ideas. And then they tell me to give out ideas. Did they give out ideas? Did they make any contributions? Did they sponsor me in the 40 years of work? I had to pay for that myself, just like Goddard had to pay for it. If they finance the books and publishing, sure I'd give them away. It belongs to the public domain. But we don't live in that kind of a world now. So laser beams are used on machine guns. When a beam is on the person or on the airplane, the bullets come out. When it's not, they don't come out. Somebody developed that. And the reason they took a patent out on it is because other people would take a patent on it if they talked to them about it. And they would not get paid for their research. It may take uh, 10 years to develop a laser. And if you develop a laser and you give it to people, you don't know what they're going to do with it. You have no guarantee. And the guy that invents it, he doesn't care what they do with it, as long as he gets paid for it. People don't care if hel helicopters are used to bomb cities or ambulances. I prefer that they be used for ambulances or surveying, aerial surveys of farm equipment and disease plants. Uh, it isn't so much the knowledge that science offers, it's how it's used. So, a lot of people get mad at technology, but it's not the technology they're really mad at. They don't know what they're mad at. What they're mad at is the abuse and misuse of technology. So, if I put the ideas out there and people sign an agreement that those ideas will not be used for weapons and they'll not be put in the, in the public domain only amongst those that are building the Venus Project. Otherwise, it'll go off in different directions. So, the invention of the airplane is a wonderful thing. could be used to move passengers faster from one area to another. But they can also be used to carry bombs. It depends on the leadership of the country, how they're used. I don't know the leadership that would pick up ideas that you just put them out there. Would they be used for the public good? The doctors had told the other doctors to wash their hands before they did surgery due to childbirth fever. He was kicked out of the hospital because other doctors knew that they couldn't see germs and they thought it was a theory. The guy that found germs was a millinery man. He worked with fabric and he noticed germs under a microscope. It wasn't scientists that found germs, but the man's name is out there in all the books on where the microscope came from. And if you don't know where the microscope came from, you don't know what questions to ask. The guy that invented the microscope, you said, how did you think of it? Where did you get the idea? Well, the public doesn't know that. If you get up and say, there are wonderful instruments, x-ray machines, we don't need to cut the body open, we can use fiber optics, light pipes to see cancer, but if you give it to people, they do not use it appropriately. They use it for profit. If you don't understand that, look at the earnings today of the large corporations that work for profit. They don't work for the betterment of humanity. Doctors are supposed to take care of people as part of the oath as you become a doctor. But if you can't afford certain things, you don't get it. Now, I'm talking of... Uh, socialized medicine, or making medical procedures available to everyone. And the doctor says, well, how am I going to make a living if I make it available? He's trapped in this system. He's got to charge because he has to pay for things. 
the doctor has to pay for all the electronic equipment he uses in his office, uh, and the hospitals have to buy materials, and they have to pay a contractor to put up the building. They don't put a building where the guy's going to treat people. So they put up a building. Then they think of all the staff working there and the people that invested in putting up the building. The people that invest and they put up the money for a return on their investment. You got to understand that that is a predatory system where everybody makes money on any human disorder. For example,